starting with adding these fractions. You might imagine, since uh, we've been working with rational uh, functions, rational expressions, you know, uh, fractions that have polynomials all throughout them, we're going to be adding those rational expressions here uh, and subtracting. Okay, so we'll start off slow, nice and easy, where we have what is it that we have that we need? Common denominator. Don't be so down. Yeah. It's exciting. Have common denominator. So how many of these fourths do we have? We have eight fourths, simplifies to two, how wonderful, okay? Uh, so if we have a common denominator, it should be pretty straightforward, okay? You ready to add some rational expressions that have common denominators? Sure. You look like it. All right, there are a couple of uh, common denominators. Here we have two 1 over x's. Here we have five 1 over x's. How many 1 over x's do we have? Seven. Seven 1 over x's. Beautiful. We have the same denominator, so we add 2 plus 5, and we get 7. We have a common denominator here. Yes, they're identical, so we should be able to add these together. So we have, uh, for example, this one here. We have 2 1 over x's, 5 of 1 over x's. We add them together, we get 2 plus 5 is 7 1 over x's. Okay? Here, we have x squared plus 2's. Okay? You know what I'm saying there? Right? Like we had fourths or fifths or whatever. We have x squared plus 2 this these. Okay? And then we have the same kinds of things over here. You know, we're apples and oranges here. We're adding them together. So how many do we have all together? Well, we have, just like we had 2 plus 5 here, we have x plus 2x squared here. So, well, if I asked you to do x plus 2x squared, you'd probably write this, and then you would not try and combine them, right? Because they're not, they're not what? The same, they're not like terms, they're not the same kind of thing, yeah, they, they don't go together. x squared plus 2. And we should always check and see if we can simplify it. We're not going to be able to here. We could factor out an x, get 2x plus uh, 1. This isn't factorable, and there aren't any common factors here. Okay? We good so far? All right, now it's, it's all about finding common denominators, but where the denominators are, well, they look like this or you know, similar to that. A little bit weird, so let's get on that. Let's start back here with this example using numbers. Right? Uh, so, what's the common denominator here? It's what? Nine. Oh, what, what, what should be the common denominator? Nine. nine, okay. So nine, three times three gives us nine, and now they have the same denominator. Okay, so we'll have some examples where one of the denominators is the denominator, like the common denominator that we're gonna go for. We can just multiply this by something, okay, and get this denominator. Is that all you need to do? What else? And, and the numerator. Okay, let's talk about exactly, like I always like to do, we talk about exactly <coughs> why that is, okay? You learn to do it, and you formed that habit, and you got that habit uh, down, but why do we have to multiply the numerator by three as well? Because if it was five over nine, it would be a lot different than five over three. Good, that's the thing I want you to concentrate on. The new fraction, the same as the old fraction in that it should be equal to it in size, right? It should be equal to it. So 5 over 9, not the same as 5 over 3, but 15 over 9, if we were to, I mean, it's kind of silly, but we're going to cancel out the factor of 3 that we just put into these numbers, but then we can get back to 5 over 3, okay? That's how we're going to know as we do these, these other kinds of fractions now that we've done it correctly, that we found the right common denominator and we've gone about getting it in the right way. So look here. If I've multiplied the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5, isn't that the same as multiplying the fraction 3 over 3? And what is 3 over 3? It is 1. So we're multiplying 5 thirds by 1. Can you multiply numbers by 1 without affecting anything? Yes, you can. Should be 
keep this in mind. There's this thing. I'm going to give you this, this problem where you're supposed to add these fractions together. And I'm wondering if you're going to make the same mistake as the other classes in finding the common denominator. Let's see. Or will you keep in mind what it is that we do, why it is that we do this the way that we do? Because we're multiplying by 1. Okay? Because we're multiplying by 1. It's clever. I mean, if you were the first guy to come up with this, or, or lady, you came up with this, that would be quite clever. You'd say, I can multiply numbers by 1. I won't change anything. Okay? So if I just change the way that this looks uh, and get uh, ninths, that would be a good idea. So how about if I multiply by 1 by, uh, by way of 3 over 3? Okay, so think about that as you go to add these two. Okay, so you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but did anybody wind up doing uh, 25 over x squared plus 2 over x squared and getting 27 over x squared? All your faces tell me it seems like no, for the most part. So I'm good at reading faces. Well, how would you get that? How would you get 25 over x squared? What was the person have to have done. So square that fraction. Can we just square fractions? No. I mean, did we square the fraction from the first page? No, we didn't. Okay. Well, let's make sure we still agree on the way to find the common denominator. How should we find the common denominator? Well, what, what will the common denominator be? X squared. I can multiply X by something to get X squared. I can turn this guy into that. And how do we do it? Multiply by x over x, because x over x is 1, okay? Multiply by 1. That's what we're doing when you find common denominators. Okay, so x over x, that's 1 that gives us 5x over x squared plus 2 over x squared. And the final answer, 5x plus 2 over x squared, not 7x or 10x or anything like that. 5x plus 2. Seems good. Am I right? Are we good? Doing well here? Okay, let's check in there. Yeah. Okay, so here's my tip. Uh, this would be my tip for finding common denominators with polynomials or numbers. Okay, and that would be factor. Let's factor uh, the denominators uh, because. That's what the common denominator really is. It's a new uh, denominator that all these denominators, this one and this one, or in three or four, however many denominators you have, all of those denominators are what? What's the relationship of all these denominators to the common denominator? Mol I like that. I like that. Because, you know what we would say a lot? Like here, like we're going to find a common denominator. Uh, what would the common denominator of these two be? Because why? I like the way you said it. Because a lot, I, uh, a common way to say this, I think, would be well, 12 because 6 and 4 go into 12. Okay? You ever heard go into? I'm sure you have. But the thing I don't like about go into is it's really vague. What does go into mean? Tell me what go into it means. Fix it and fits into it a certain amount of times. What does that mean exactly? It goes into it. It's just kind of said goes into. And that's just what Cody said. You can multiply by so that's what goes into means. So why do we say goes into? Wouldn't it really mean that you can multiply by something to get the new number? I can multiply four by something to get twelve. I can multiply six by something to get twelve. Right? Okay. So let's go back here. So if we factor the denominators, we see what gets multiplied together to make those denominators. And since we're looking to multiply things together to get new things, we should really see what's multiplying together to get this, what's multiplying together to get this. This is, this is pretty much, I could write 2 times x times x, but that would be kind of silly. But it can be done. We can do it. But here, we can factor this as what? in 
this case, we just have these two terms, and these two terms share a factor. Right? What do they share? Two and an x squared. We're left with three x plus four. And I, I wrote this problem just so that, what do we find here? Which is exactly the same as this guy over here, right? So right away, I multiplied by three x plus four without uh -huh. even factoring. Yeah. And I looked at two x. And it's, yeah, and if that you're thinking on that wavelength, then that works fine too. I mean, you're really asking the same question. What can I multiply this by to get this? So without really thinking about it, you did factor this. Yeah. Right? You figured out that there is a 2x squared here and a 2x squared here, so you knew you could multiply this by something. Um, but yeah, you, you could have seen it probably. Like I saw quite a few of these, 3x plus 4. And I don't think I saw anybody factoring this. So, so we're just going to multiply by the same thing in the numerator and denominator. get the new denominator of 2x squared times 3x plus 4. And I'm not going to write two fractions here because all that's going to happen is we're going to take, uh, if we did, we would write a fraction with a denominator of 2x squared plus, uh, 2x squared times 3x plus 4. We would write minus another fraction with the same denominator and we put them together over the same denominator. See what I'm saying? So let's just go ahead and say there's the denominator of the new fraction and we'll deal with the numerator. This numerator, right? This numerator will be the product of these two. Make sure that you do what when you multiply these together? You distribute. You don't just like multiply the four in there and nothing else. And don't just multiply these guys by the three x. Make sure you're multiplying everything together. So we get nine x squared plus twelve x and three x. So uh, yeah, right now four is the last part of that. Then we subtract, here's another important piece, don't just subtract the 4x, you're subtracting this fraction, okay? Which means if I'm gonna subtract this fraction, I'm gonna subtract this numerator from this numerator. So long story short, distribute the negative to the entire numerator. Anything that I say that you think, oh, I, you know, I didn't think of that, you should write it down because future you will probably forget. You may not, but you probably will. So 9x squared plus 15x plus 4 plus 4 minus 4x minus 3 all over the new denominator. And we get 9x squared, no common denominator, no i terms there. 15x minus 4x is 11x. 4 minus 3 is 1 over 2x squared times 3x plus 4. What do you think about that? Yes, Cody. So, depending on what you do, could you leave the denominator as 6x squared plus 8x? Uh, yeah, because that's what this is, right? And so, that uh, basically, you're saying, like, you're asking people <coughs> to distribute 2x squared, which you could do, because it's the same. Um, the nice thing, though, about leaving the denominator factored, okay, is, uh, like, let's go to that front page. See what happens sometimes when you add fractions together? It simplifies. Okay. How are we going to simplify fractions? Well, we know from the quest, you want to factor all those polynomials first and then look for common factors. Okay. So rather than multiplying them together and factoring them out again, at least until we know if it simplifies and we can factor. Okay. Another one, Okay. same as the ones before, in that one, one denominator can be turned in to the other denominator. Right. I think I checked everybody's and everybody's looked good. I'm not sure how you came up with it, but this is how I would suggest that you approach every problem where we're going to add or subtract these fractions. Uh, look at both denominators, or all three or four, however many denominators there are, and factor them. Okay, factor them. And this factors as x plus 4 times x plus 3. Okay. And I'm going to say some stuff up here, and you're going to think I'm saying more than is necessary. Okay. And maybe I can never convince you that you're wrong about that, but you are wrong about that. Okay. I'm not saying more than necessary, I'm saying exactly what we're looking for so that later we can be really prepared.
precise. The common denominator, right? In fact, the least common denominator is, let's say, a new denominator. Let's say that you can get by doing what? Uh, that's the, like the strategy for finding it, but the properties of the lowest common denominator okay, are a uh, new denominator that you can get by, like how do I, not how do I find it, but how do I turn the old denominators into the new denominator? By multiplying, okay. by multiplying, uh, each denominator by some factor or factors. That seem like a pretty airtight definition? Almost. We kind of just dis defined a common denominator, the least common denominator. Maybe we have to throw more stuff in there. But you know what we're going for. We want the, a new denominator that you can multiply each of the denominators by to get that new denominator. Okay. And a least common denominator is one that we just don't have more factors than necessary. In particular, repeat factors. Okay? Kind of a silly thing to do if we can avoid it. So you have x plus 4 times x plus 3. Okay? Let me give you a little taste of what we're looking at here in the future. Like if I had um, uh, 3 fifths plus 2 thirds, what's going to be the new denominator? Now how do we get that denominator? Yeah, there's nothing to do but multiply 5 times 3, right? Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to multiply the two denominators together. That's all you can do, okay? So here, should we multiply x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 3? No, because all we need to do is get this guy to look like this one, and it already has an x plus 4, so all it needs is... Do as little work as possible. So we multiply by x plus 3. We're going to get uh, x to the third plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 6 plus 2x squared plus 3 over the denominator x plus 3 times x plus 4. Again, yeah, that was the same question as. Uh, could we write this as 6x cubed plus 8x squared? You can leave it that way. The only reason I say that uh, you shouldn't until the very, very end is because we want to see if we can simplify this. So let's combine like terms. x cubed plus 5x squared um, plus 2x plus 9 all over x plus 3. If, I, if this looked like x squared plus 7x plus 12, then if I want to go simplify it, then I'd have to factor it anyway. So let's see if it's, if it's uh, simplifiable at all. If it's simplifiable, then that means that this has a factor of what? Plus 3 or x plus 4, okay? Can you factor this? By group. We can, try, we can try grouping. That's a good idea. We try grouping, and we take out an x. We take out a, well, nothing. There's no nothing, right? A 1. Uh, and what's that? All right, an x, sorry, excuse me. An x squared for the first one, OK? But the problem is just not going to work, because what we would need is, OK, so if we take out an x squared, we're going to be left with x plus 5, right? And so then we should get an x plus 5 when we factor out the common factor here, but there isn't any common factor. We get 2x plus 9 in there, not, it's, it's not working. Now, just because it's factored by grouping didn't work, doesn't mean it's not factorable. We still have x plus 4 as a factor, x plus 3 as a factor. Now, how am I going to figure out if x plus 4 or x plus 3? Let's just start with x plus 3. Can we figure out long division? Okay. With the synthetic division, which we can use because we have 1x plus something or minus something, okay? So we can use synthetic by doing this. And it'll take like no 
no time at all. We put our coefficients here, bring down this one, and we go and multiply by negative three, get two. Multiply by negative three, get negative six. Add, get negative four. Multiply, get 12. No, you didn't get zero. It is not divisible by x plus three. All right, let's try x plus four real quick. Bring down the one, negative four, one, four, two, eight. No, that did not get zero. So it's not divisible by x plus four. It's not divisible by x plus three. This does not simplify. You can feel free to leave it the way it looks now or write, you know, multiply the denominator out so it looks like x squared plus 7x plus 12. But that's why it's a good idea to leave the factor until the very end. So we're about to give up, or not give up, but move on past the kinds of adding and subtracting fractions where one denominator actually happens to be the denominator that's the common denominator. Does that make sense? A lot of words. Okay. So now the two denominators are going to be different, and the, the common denominator is going to be just some other denominator completely. Okay. So we're going to have to get both denominators to be. So let's start with that. Or, are we ready for that? We're not ready for that. What should we do? Sleep. Sleep? Well, I can't. That's not really a solution I can offer. I could uh, we can take a short break. Yeah. Short break, okay. Problem, and I find a new denominator. It's not x minus four, it's not x plus two. I bet you didn't find that too much did it for me. Okay, so we have to multiply x minus four times something. We have to multiply x plus two times something to get the same denominator. So what would we have to multiply x minus four by? X plus two, how about x plus two times x minus four? The key here is since we're, what we're saying is we're going to multiply each denominator by something to get the new denominator, when we talk about multiplying things together, we're talking about factors. Okay? That's what a factor is. You multiply something times something else, the, those two things you just multiplied, they're factors. So we should look at the factors of each denominator and try to find some hybrid of those, of those factors. Well, these two, in this case, there is no factoring of x minus 4. There's no factor of x plus 2. Those are the factors. To get a denominator that has all the same factors, or, or say that, that has the factors of each denominator, all there is to do is to multiply the two denominators together. Like when the denominators are 3 and 5, you multiply them together, you get 15. So multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. And so we get 3x squared plus 6x plus x squared minus 4x x plus 2 times x minus 4. And we'll combine like terms to get 4x squared plus 2x. Just making sure we'll find out whether or not they can simplify. We'll take out a 2x, leaves us with a 2x plus 1. No factors of 2 in common, no factors of x in common, no factors of 2x plus 1 in common, so we're done. It's not going to simplify. And since I've already done the work of factoring, we'll leave it as 2x times 2x plus 1 over this factor denominator. I can multiply them together. It's all the same answer. It doesn't matter. All right, so here's the first time that the denominator, like neither one of the denominators is the common denominator. And it's not so easy as just multiplying the two denominators together, or if we did, it would be too much. It would be like having uh, 5, 6 plus 3 fourths, and multiplying 6 times 4 to get a common denominator of 24. Right? There's a smaller number, a lesser number, that 6 is a factor of, notice I didn't say 6 goes into, and that 4 is a factor of x. 6 is a factor of it, 4 is a factor of it. Okay. So there is some other denominator that x squared minus 9 is a factor of, and that x squared plus 6, x plus 9 is a factor of. Okay. See if you can figure that out. If you can't, that's fine. We'll figure it out together. All right, to understand why we're about to do what we're about to do here and, and how we should approach every other addition or subtraction of rational expressions problem, Let's take a look at this old 
fraction addition problem. Not that big a deal. Uh, so I want to be able to multiply six by something to get some new number, and four by something else to get that same number. Okay. I'll put it another way, I need the factors of six to be factors of this new number, right? If six needs to be a factor of the new number, then the factors of six need to be factors of the new number. Okay? And so six is two times three. Okay, just factor out six is two times three. Right? Four is two times two. Can I multiply two times three times two times two? Well, I mean, it'll give me 24. Because six times something will be 24. Four times something will be 24, right? That's too big. We, we know that just having worked with fractions for so many years. So let's look at this in a way that will help us look at that. Um, if I need some new number, let's call it the question mark, the new common denominator, the lowest common denominator. Well, I know that I need six to be a factor of that number. I need six times something to be this number here, right? Okay, so that's two times three. Right? I also need four to be a factor of this number. Okay. Well, if I just say to myself, I need a two times a two, I need two factors of two in this new number. I need two factors of two to be in this new number. From six, I already have a factor of two, right? I already have one factor of two that I need for this to be, for four to be a factor. What if I just multiply by another two? I just take two times three, throw another two in there. Let's see if we have everything we need. If I split it up in one way, I have six times two, okay? And that gives me 12, right? So six is a factor of 12, right? Okay, if I bring it up another way, I have four times three, four times three. So four times something gives me 12. Four is a factor of the denominator, right? Okay, and by just taking a note and saying, that I don't need to bring both factors of two into this new number, there's already a factor of two that six has. So that takes care of one of the factors of two that I need for four. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna factor this. How do we factor x squared minus nine? That's right, it's a difference of squares. How about this one? So, just like I said, we're obviously going to need 2 and 3 to be factors of this new denominator. We're going to need a factor of x plus 3 and a factor of x minus 3. Agreed? I'm going to have to be able to multiply x plus 3 times x minus 3 times something, maybe something else, maybe something else to get this new denominator. Please excuse the interruption. Please release all. Um, all right, so x plus 3 and x minus 3 are now factors of... Guarantee they'll be factors of the new denominator. And what else do I need? I need that x squared plus 6x plus 9 to be a factor, which means I need an x plus 3 factor and another x plus 3 factor. All right. Do I want to just bring down both of those factors of x plus 3? No, because why? There's already one right there. There's already one right there. So if I throw an extra one in there, I've got a product, a denominator, that has two factors of x plus 3, just like it should. It also has a factor of x plus 3 and x minus 3, just like it should. Okay. So I see a number that is, at the same time, x plus 3 times x minus 3 times something. That's my new denominator. It's also x plus 3 times x plus 3 times something. Gives me my new de denominator. So by going through and factoring each of the denominators and then looking for repeat factors that I don't need to bring in, okay, so that it will be too big, we, uh, well, we save ourselves from making a denominator that's too complicated, too high a degree of polynomial. And especially, we save ourselves from having to simplify the answer, at least. I mean, it might, might be simplifiable. We're guaranteeing that it's going to be simplifiable if we make our denominator too big. Just like if I did this. If I multiply this by 4 and this by 6, I would get 20 over 24 plus uh, 18 over 24. What I did is I just gave both of these an extra factor of two they did not need to have. So I'm going to guarantee that the answer is going to have a factor of two that needs to be factored out. Now that extra factor is an x plus three, it's even harder to find. Okay. Even harder to find than 
this. We find this is 38 over 24. There's a factor of 2 now, it's like obviously, between these two. Okay, so we're going to get uh, 19. 19. Yeah, 19 makes sense. Over 12. I didn't have to do that if I had just found the least common denominator. All right. Don't multiply the denominators together. Just make sure you look for those repeat factors. So this needs to be multiplied by a what? by x plus 3, and the other one needs to be multiplied by x minus 3. And we made sure that we have the least common denominator. Plus 3 times x, x plus 3, or sorry, x minus 3 under this one. So you get x squared plus 3x plus x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Terms 2x squared um, plus x minus 3 over x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. And we're just going to double check. It may or may not be fact, uh, uh, simplifiable. We need to factor this. Can we factor 2x squared plus x minus 3? How so? By grouping. So we'll do 2 times negative 3, right? You get negative 6. Negative 6. And we need two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. 3 negative 2. Yeah. 3 negative 2. So we rewrite it as a, maybe I'll write it up here. 2x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 3. Group and group. Okay. Here we have an x. We can pull out of there. 2x plus 3. And this one? Negative 1. Uh, we do 2x plus 3. So we get x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. Does it simplify? No, it doesn't simplify. Okay. Now we know for sure. Step one to each of these, I would say step one would be, maybe you would do guess is step one. Factor the denominator. Factor the denominator. So let's factor this denominator. Don't be shy. Until you get x minus one. No. It's factor is written as something times something, right? How about this one? X minus three x. Two denominators that have all the factors, both denominators, without having too many factors. Okay? This has a 2, this has an x minus 1. This also has an x minus 1. Okay? But it has an x minus 3, and it has no 2. Okay. So what would I need to multiply this denominator by and this denominator by so that they look exactly the same? This needs an x minus 3, and this one needs. This one needs all the factors of this denominator that it doesn't have, and this one needs all the factors of this denominator that it, did, that it does not have. Okay? That it does not have is the key part there. If it already has it, it doesn't need another one. Okay? And then we keep ourselves from making too big a denominator. We'll multiply by x minus 3 up here as well. Multiply this by 2. Cruise right along here, we get x squared minus x minus 6. Look, pay attention, minus this numerator. Okay, so minus whatever we get after we distribute the 2. Minus negative 4x minus 2. Just distributing the 2 and subtract. All over 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. So I'll distribute the negative and combine like terms at the same time. So we have x squared. 
negative x plus 4x, negative x plus 4x, negative 6 plus 2, negative 4, factor the numerator, how does it factor? x plus 4, x minus 1. And we have a common factor of x minus 1. x plus 4 over 2x minus 6. Just distributed that 2 to the x minus 3. challenging uh, adding fractions problem, then we'll look at compound fractions. So, let me write that last one here. x plus 2 over x cubed plus 5x cubed. Even if you're not finished, I think everybody's made the you know, important strides. The first one being, how do we factor these? These yeah, this grouping, right? And make sure that we can factor by grouping so at least that is beyond us. And then factor by negative 9. Okay, we got two factors of x plus 5, or a common factor of x plus 5, so we take out that x plus 5 factor, we're left with x squared minus 9. Here's another important thing difference of squares, x plus 5. X plus 3, minus 3, okay, Let's save our little cells a little bit of time, we're going to factor the grouping, or that, so squares, where are we going to wind up getting? X minus 5, X plus 5, X plus 3. We have an agreement there? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good job. So, all we've done is factor so far, now we're looking for a new denominator, then we can multiply this denominator by something to get and multiply this denominator by something to get. Okay? So what factor is this missing? We need, we got an x plus 5, x plus 3, x minus 3, but it's missing an x plus, uh, sorry, an x minus 5. It does not have a factor of an x minus 5. Otherwise, it has the same factors as this guy here. Okay? So x minus 5. Okay? And this one has, uh, obviously, an x minus 5. It has an x plus 5, it has an x plus 3, but it, not, it does not have an x minus 3. This is kind of a, a monster, but it, this, this one only has gained one more factor, and so we have to multiply the numerator by just one factor of x minus 5. Multiply this guy by an x minus 3. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 10 minus, remember minus, whatever we find here, 3x squared, uh, minus times 6, minus 3x, minus 18, all over, I'm just going to cheat, remember if you're getting tired of writing the same things, copy and paste it in your notes, a lot of people forget about that, uh, so we have x squared, minus 3x squared is negative 2x squared, x squared. Uh, negative 3x minus negative 3x. 0x. Okay. Negative 10 minus negative 18. That's 8. You can tell already this is not going to simplify, right? I'm going to factor out a negative 2. We'll be left with x squared minus 4. And oh, wait. Well, that's a coincidence x plus 2, x minus 2, and that still doesn't factor, or still doesn't uh, simplify, okay? But we're left with, multiply it out, don't multiply it out, whatever you want. What's that? Maybe, if, maybe we put the work in 
See, I gotta leave it factored up until right here. Oh, now I don't have to write anything else. I'm just put my hands up, say I'm done. Ready? It does multiply kind of nicely because this is x squared minus 25 and x squared minus 9, and so there's not that much left to do. But I am just gonna go ahead and leave it. All right. Well done, well done. Now we're gonna have compound fractions. Compound fractions are fractions within fractions. Okay? And it's a simple little trick we're gonna learn here that involves the common denominator. Okay? And if you can understand this trick, it's gonna help in the next section too. Alright, so let's start off with an easy compound fraction. Well, I don't know. Basic. So the thing is, the thing that we want is to not have a fraction inside the fraction. You have any ideas? Any pioneers here thinking I, I know a way that I can not change the value of the entire fraction, but I can find a way to make it so that that's not a fraction. Multiple. Oh, that's nice. When I multiply this by its own reciprocal, I get one. Okay, I'm just going to modify that just a little bit. It's going to look the same. But we don't want to always multiply by the reciprocal for every compound fraction. Okay? But I'm going to modify it and say just multiply by this denominator. Okay? Just multiply by x. Now, of course, x is x over 1, and that is the reciprocal of 1 over x. But we're always just going to multiply by something over 1. Because okay? it, it could get messy if we have something other than 1 here. All right. So multiply the denominator by x as well. Let's see what happens. I distribute the x over 1 to both of these things. I get x over x plus 2x over 3x. And what's x over x? It's just 1. That's nice. 1 plus 2x over 3x. Good idea. If you multiply by something in the numerator and denominator, that cancels that denominator out in the fraction within the fraction. Cleaned it up real nice. Now what do you think? Let's even change this so I can uh, make a point of I was talking about before, so I can make that a three. Anybody want to take Kane's idea and uh, mutate it? Multiply by something. Which fraction? The whole. The big, this the whole thing. thing. Well, here's the thing. Here's why what we did here is just fine. Because it multiplied the numerator by x and the denominator by x. By the same thing. What is x over x? 1. We multiply the original fraction by 1. If I multiply this fraction by the reciprocal of itself, is that 1? It would come out to be 1. But is this a, so that would mean the original fraction would ne must necessarily be equal to 1. If I approach every problem that way, then every fraction is equal to 1. You know what like if you multiply by the reciprocal, you're going to get something that is not equal to the original. That's the thing about reciprocals and canceling out denominators. Like that's a good idea. So something that I can multiply this by that will cancel out this x. And the same thing, at the same time, will cancel out this x squared. All we want is the denominators to cancel out. We don't necessarily want these to be ones, we just want them to not have denominators anymore. Multiply by x squared over x squared. Let's see how that plays out. I'm going to distribute that x squared. Okay. Remember, it's x squared over 1. You can multiply, you just multiply straight across. So we're going to x squared over x plus 3x squared over x squared over 2x squared. The thing is, I have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. That's my idea. So x squared over x, what's that? x. And it's okay that it's not like a 1 or like a number. It's not a fraction. That's the point. Okay. And x squared and x squared, they're common factors. They cancel each other out. We get a 3 there and a 2x squared. And we don't cancel one of these x's with this x because we like baby animals. What's that? Yes. If you were to write like the x squared over x and then multiply it by 1 over x, couldn't you just uh, cross cancel the x out? Well, how would I make it so that I can multiply this fraction by a 1 over x? Uh, the fraction is going to come. And you distribute it in. 
Okay, so maybe I'm misunderstanding. Let me go back up. Whoops. Say it again. So if you need two p x squared times one over x. Yes. Could mean you just cross. Oh cross yes. Temple, but I didn't want to do too much at once in case anybody got confused about that. But yeah, that would be good. I can, I can distribute and cancel at the same time. Same thing with x squared times three over x squared. Cancel leaves a three. Yeah. Would the same process work if we had a fraction of both the numerator and the denominator? It would. We should look at that. First, though, we'll look at this. Megan, what did you do? That's good. Multiply by x plus 1, because if I multiply 3 over x plus 1 times x plus 1, we get a new fraction that has a common factor of x plus 1, or we get cross cancellation. Good idea. I'm going to show you what it looks like to distribute the whole thing, but if you can do these steps in your head and not have to bother with the distribution, that's fine. So I'm going to distribute the x plus 1 to both of these. I get 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 1, plus, here's the part that you might get tripped up on. You got 3 times x plus 1, meaning distribute the 3 into the x plus 1. Over, same thing, 5 needs to get distributed to the x plus 1. So here, mission accomplished. That's why we multiplied by x plus 1. You got a factor of x plus 1 in common in the numerator and denominator of this guy, and they cancel. And now we have no more fractions in fraction. 2 plus 3x plus 3, 5x plus 5, 3x plus 5 over 5x plus 5. And we don't cancel this 5 with this 5 because, again, kind of maybe the other 2. 3 plus 2. It's 5. Brainstorm this together. What do you think you might do? Yeah, we can multiply by two different ones. Okay. We certainly can. And let's see, you know, does it help us out? Let's find out. The only thing we want to accomplish here is to not have fractions inside the fraction. So if I multiply by x plus 2, we just saw how like it'll distribute, we're gonna common factor of x plus two, and everything cancels out, how nice. What about this x minus one? So multiply by x minus one as well. So we have to do the denominator. Okay, it's an idea. Let's see what this you know bears out. What happens? Well, I'll distribute both of these together and we'll see exactly what happens. We get three times x minus one times x plus two over x plus 2, and look at that, the x plus 2 factors are common and they cancel each other out, divide each other into 1, plus 7 times x minus 1 times x plus 2 over x minus 1, and look what happens there, the x minus 1 part cancels out this denominator of x minus 1. Now we get an x minus 1 left here and an x plus 2 there, but the only thing we need to have happen is to not have fractions in our fraction. Have is 3 times x minus 1, that's 3x minus 3, plus 7 times x plus 2, 7x plus 14, over 5 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. And then we have 10x, 10x my, or plus uh, 11, over 5 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. You can look at 10x plus 1, factor it, but well, there's no factor in 10x plus 1, so no simplifying. But mission accomplished. No more fractions in the fraction. Right, last little doozy here. Let's go with Nate's question.
so we want to multiply the numerator by something that will cause this fraction to have a x plus one factor, so it cancels out the x plus one. We want this fraction to wind up with an x squared plus three x plus two in it, so that it'll cancel that. And in the denominator, we also have this denominator in the denominator to worry about. Uh, something to cancel this x plus two. Does it? Maybe it does. We should probably know what the factors of this are before we go too far, right? And these factors are? Uh, well, that's kind of nice, isn't it? Because then we don't have to have three, just two. Because this is a factor of that, and that's a factor of that. What is this? What is, what is this? What is the relationship of this? these two factors here to this fraction, this fraction, and this fraction? It's the common denominator, the least common denominator, right? Does that make sense? The common denominator is a denominator that has all the denominators as factors. So if I multiply the numerator and denominator of this mega fraction by the common denominator of all three, it should cancel out all three factors, all three denominators. Right? So we'll multiply by x plus two times x plus one plus one. And now we'll do uh, we'll do the canceling part in our heads. Is that going to be all right? Mm -hmm. All right, so both factors get canceled when we distribute it to the first fraction, and we wind up with a two. When we distribute this to the second fraction, the x plus one cancels the x plus one. We're just left with three times x plus two. And in the denominator, when we distribute the x plus two uh, times x plus one, the x plus twos cancel, and we're left with five x times x plus one. plus 3x plus 6 over, let's call it 5x times x plus 1, just in case this factors, which doesn't look like it does, because this is 3x plus 8 over x times x plus 1. Looks like it was going to be kind of bad, but, it, you know, it's the, all these, what, what mostly happens is a bunch of canceling of stuff. It actually kind of makes it a little easier. And there's your homework. <laughs>